Okay. Um, my name is Lee Jeffries. I'm a senior solutions architect for Login VSI. Doesn't that just mean old? Yep. I am a current CTP and VIPP. Uh, I am also a current member of GoEUC. And uh, generally, I am a running slash fitness technology geek and all purpose nerd. So uh, I love anything to do with tech. I'm sorry about the avatar, it was AI'd. Uh, I don't generally think it looks like me. So, um, obviously this is a sponsor session, but I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, so I'm actually giving you some real world results of different testing, but before I do that, I have to do the general marketing bump, and you will have to learn a little bit about Login Enterprise. So we have a tool called Login Enterprise. As a bit of a summary on what it does, uh, Login Enterprise launches virtual users into desktops, and then we automate applications inside those desktops, which gives you insightful actions into how the users behave, how the applications perform, and all those different things. Now, primarily, we have three different tests. We, uh, we use image change control as a bit of a marketing slogan. What it means is automated app UAT. So we log a virtual user into a desktop, we run the apps, and we give you a PDF that says all your apps work or they don't. And if they don't, we give you a screenshot tells you maybe what the problem was. We then have pre-production visibility, which is all about load testing, so we're gauging performance. So before you roll out a change to a desktop, uh, you do a test before, you do a test after, we tell you all about the performance differences. Uh, then we have production insights, which are all about continuous tests. We log a user onto a desktop every five minutes, 10 minutes. We capture all the information about the session, the performance, how the applications behave, and then we graph that for you historically. So you can see over time, do you have any sort of performance drift in your environment? Does it get worse or is it getting better? We wrap all that information up into dashboards and reports. That's the lifecycle optimization bit so that you can continue to go around that sort of wheel of change. Now, it's always a bit confusing when we talk about virtual users, so this is what they look like. So virtual user logged into an AVD desktop, automating office applications inside that desktop. So by default, the office applications and web browsers are included. We also have a Teams workload in there as well. So it depends what you're trying to test. The reason we are here is because in EUC generally, and it doesn't matter if it's a physical desktop or a virtual desktop, we are in this circle of change. We're always trying to assess a change, understand what the impacts might be, plan for it, deploy it, and understand if we made it better or worse. Sometimes we just fire and forget Maybe it's better, maybe it isn't. But we don't know. So what we want to do in a timeline is give you the ability to understand if you're making good changes or bad changes. So from a business standpoint, you may be looking at Windows 11. Anywhere where you can see a Login Enterprise logo, that's where we're adding a bit of value in this journey. So if you are managing a desktop estate, and as I said, it doesn't matter if it's physical or virtual, you may be doing some of these things, upgrading your AV provider but you'll want to understand, is it better or worse? So that's what we do. Now, on to the fun stuff. Anybody use Intel GPUs? All right, there's two people. Anybody use NVIDIA GPUs? More hands, okay, cool. Uh, this will be interesting then. So, Intel have a couple of different cards. They have a Flex 140 and a Flex 170. They've also got bigger data center GPUs, but the testing for this, is all about these cards. So these cards are not designed to be your AI drivers or the sort of really beefy things, but they are designed to improve user experience in virtual environments. So you can pop one of these into pretty much any server. They're quite low powered, very, very efficient. Um, and instead of using like typical partitioning, if you're used to that sort of NVIDIA terminology, they use something called virtual functions, which is basically dividing the card up by a number of times. So in this particular test, done with Intel as the vendor, uh, 96 VMs, 24 virtual functions per node. So what that means is the card's been split up 24 times. So in a 12 gig card, every machine that we're testing has one gig. It's done on Horizon, this testing, and it's done with single session machines. So the way it was actually done is by using a GPU-based workload in Login Enterprise. We're not driving like AutoCAD and something very complex or something very demanding. We're actually looking at apps we can use without worrying about licensing, built-in things if we can. And what we're looking for is a baseline of performance with and without GPUs. 
and to understand what does it do to our density of that physical environment. How many users do we fit on it? Is it better or worse? So, in doing all of this, we actually had a bunch of users running without GPUs enabled, just creating lots of noise, and then we had 96 machines with GPUs enabled, and the results are all from those machines. So, if we have a look at these graphs, what we're actually seeing here, and the, the number in the top left is actually the CPU skew. It's actually done with two CPU skews, but I just nailed it down to just one for this. Um, what we saw was, uh, when the 3D workload kicks in, we actually have a frames per second increase. And then, as you see in the bottom left, we actually had a, a lower CPU utilization. And the whole idea of this is, uh, Intel have actually released a paper for this, by the way, you can find it on their website. Um, the whole idea of this is to justify why you should put these, these GPUs in the servers, okay, and, and how it improves your user density. Now, um, what I have to add in here is in our next slide, we talk about increases. Um, there's no licensing fees on these Intel GPUs, okay? So you just buy the GPU, put it in the server, carve it up however you like, that's it. You don't pay anything extra. So they're being quite disruptive in the way that they're sort of putting these out to market. So some cool numbers. So just in summary, 50% CPU resources, like 50% additional CPU resources available or 50% density increase if it's CPU dependent workloads. And out of all of these cards, I think the Flex 140 is about 2,500 pounds. So it's not horrendously expensive either. So anyway, that's just uh, a bit of an insight in the sort of testing we do, working with vendors, and uh, something that I could just display to you. Now, I want to talk about Teams, new Teams. Who uses Teams? Who uses Zoom? <laughs> just James. <laughs> we all love to hate you, don't we? So, um, in case you've been living under a rock, um, there's a new Teams version out. It's an MSIX package. Um, Classics Teams is being retired, or what we're calling Classic Teams now is the old client that's like the electron wrapped version. And what this means is that you've got different timescales now to get everything sorted by. So it was originally going to be June, it's now been extended to October. Uh, but what that means, and this is on the Microsoft site by the way, this diagram, uh, is that you need to be on new Teams. So if you're running Windows Server 2016, upgrade it because you can't run MSIX packages on server. Well, you can't run Teams v2 on Windows Server 2016. So make sure you're on a supported OS. Now, uh, I mentioned new Teams is sort of MSIX. It's, it's slated to be more resource efficient. We wanted to sort of put that to the test and understand what the differences are. Is it better or worse? Um, and what these are the sorts of results that we came up with. So, the workload was a pretty basic one. Um, we took the knowledge worker workload. We ran that alongside uh, the users running Teams and we added Teams to that. And the way that we configured this was we had a laptop sitting on a windowsill with the webcam looking out the window. So like the tree moved and stuff. And uh, we got these virtual users to log in and join that conference call for six minutes just to see the user's webcam uh, and see how that performed. We did this just with one VM because we're not looking at like very, very large scale testing. We just wanted a really small direct comparison. So we did four different tests. We did just the knowledge worker without Teams to get a baseline of what's the density like on the VM before we've done anything, before we put Teams on. We then, uh, we then had Teams with the auto start so not actually joining the conference hall, just starting up, so we can judge things like what's the CPU like when it, when it boots up, what's the memory consumption. And then we did teams optimized, so offloading, and teams not optimized to understand all the different variations of performance. And what we actually ended up with was quite some interesting graphs. So we can fit 20 users on a D8 AS V5. That's with the default marketplace image, no optimization, has a good EUX score of seven. That's a, that's a good value. And CPU and memory consumption there. So you can see it in the graph. We don't max everything out. So that's without teams involved at all. We then 
put teams in there just to auto start. So we're not doing anything with teams, it's just running. So we had to reduce our density because we couldn't fit the same amount of users on anymore just with teams running. So we're now down to 16 users for that same VM, but we've got a better EUX score because we've got less users on it. And that's usually to do with the disk that's attached to the VM. But that's the reason for the reduction in the density. But you can see CPUs a little bit higher on this graph right at the beginning of the workload. Now we've got new teams just with the auto start. So this is a comparison between classic and new. So the orange line is the new teams client. So you can see it's roughly about the same, right? but we're still auto starting. CPU utilization, classic teams optimized. So we're offloading. So we've got 16 users, still on the VM. You can see there that because we're offloading it, we're not maxing out the CPU. It's great stuff. We all expect that, right? That's why we offload. This is new teams optimized and offloading. Same amount of users, but you can actually see new teams is a little bit, little bit lower on the CPU, which is good news for us because it'll be cheaper in the cloud. So <clears throat> what about memory utilization? This is classic teams optimized. So we can see here the, the window where we've joined the meeting. Keep looking. So this is the new teams client. So we can actually see a memory, memory reduction as well when we're offloading. So does everyone believe that their Teams is optimized 100% of the time? No. Why? Because if we don't control the devices, right, if we don't control the endpoints, we can't guarantee that we're actually offloading that traffic. And that's a problem that we all have because no one purely uses just managed devices. So then we get into a non-optimized state and we see some more interesting numbers. So we've now reduced the density the density's down, I believe, I don't think I chopped the slide out before this one, six, six concurrent calls is that CPU usage. So we've still got the same amount of users, but that's what happens when we're actually having six users inside that conference call. So that's with Classic. This is the new Teams. So if you're in an environment where you're not fully managed devices and you can't guarantee it's offloaded, in new Teams is actually going to be a little bit worse on your CPU. Okay. So that's just something to watch out for, something to be aware of. Now, uh, memory, memory utilization when it's not optimized. Yep, it's a bit higher. That's classic, this is new teams. So overall, new teams, lower on memory consumption. Lower on CPU when it's offloaded and when it just runs normally. But if it's not optimized, red flag time. So uh, we only get 10 users to the VM when it's not optimized with the new Teams climb. Now, a few observations. Um, with the non-optimized test, we saw a bit of a strange pattern where every time a user joined a call, it ate up a load of memory and it never returned it. So what you see here, that little green graph, is the memory continuously being eaten up with every person that joins a call. So if you get to a point where your VMs some, at some point just die randomly and you don't really understand why, it may well be non-optimized calls eating up memory over a period of time until there's none left and then the machine dies. So bear in mind for that as well. That's been reported, by the way, back to Microsoft. So the Teams team are aware of that. So some conclusions. Um, get in front of it now. If you don't know how to deploy new Teams, read the uh, article on the Microsoft website. Literally just Google Teams V2 installation VDI and it will reel it all out for you. Uh, you need the latest version of FS Logics if you want it to work. Um, obviously get off server 2016 and uh, just bear in mind these insights. So that being said, I have t-shirts that I need to give to people. So please come to the stand <laughs> and grab a t-shirt. <laughs> you don't have to buy anything. You don't even have to have a conversation with me if you don't want to. I just, <laughs> I just don't want to take them home. But if you are interested in um, judging performance in your environment, come and talk to me, let's have a conversation. Are the t-shirts Absolutely. In every single way, Chris. Um, Chris is going to try one on, he's going to model it for you, and he's going to tell you how optimised it is.